for me it's the lens that rosemary went through to pull off this murder the mental capacity the emotional capacity that one requires to premeditate something as horrendous as this Hi family, welcome back to my channel, Self Love with Mobile. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do the right thing. Hit the subscribe button just below this video. Um, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything that I post. In this video, you know, the fact that I had to watch this at night shows the dedication that I have <laughs> to everyone on this channel. I am shook. I am beyond speechless but we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about this so the focus of this episode was on um the death of her late um boyfriend who um was morris mabasa so rosemary um was in a relationship with morris right and they met when um rosemary was doing a roadblock right because we all know she was a police officer so during one of her roadblocks she meets Morris, they exchange numbers and they started this relationship. Now, in the in the episode, you'd see commentaries from families, but one in particular, guys, that really stood out to me. We had the principal, um, uh, where Rosemary was a pupil, you know, um, in her first, you know, levels of education, like your primary school, and the principal honestly testified that. Um, Rosemary um, never showed any signs that she would one day turn into the criminal that she is. So she never showed any violent behaviors. She was not a naughty child. You know, those traits that you would click later on and say, oh, as a child, she was this person. And that's probably why she turned out as an adult to be that person. So her principal said, the only thing um, that was concerning was that Rosemary came from a humble family, meaning that um, the family that she came from was not a well-off family, um, disadvantaged, um, poor, and they lacked money. So when Rosemary finally got the independence that, you know, she was fighting so hard to get, she couldn't get enough of it. She wasn't used to it. She wanted more and more meant it could take anything and she was willing to do anything. I think that also is a very dangerous trait. So they're showing us this journey of um, Rosemary and Morris's relationship, you know, how it started. It all starts well. And then, you know, towards the end, um, there were a lot of problems. Um, you know, Morris was now fed up and he wanted to leave and he, you know, he called his family and told his family that, um, he's had enough and in actual fact, he wants to leave the relationship. Now you must remember that in this relationship, um, is a child that was born from this relationship. And now Morris says, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I want to leave. So he forms his family and tells his family, no, I'm on my way. I'm packing, like packing bags. He was, he had bags packed and he was leaving. When he gets to the rank, right? Um, there's an incident that takes place. Rosemary now contacts the family. And Rosemary says to the family, you know, I haven't seen Morris today. He hasn't come home today. And, you know, the brother says, but you're a police officer. You know the process of how to report a missing person. Why are you not doing that? Rosemary, the following day, um, goes to the station to report Morris missing. But she goes without a photo. Right, she goes without a photo. And the process then is you need to have a photo of the person that you are reporting missing. Rosemary knows this. 
I mean, guys, she's a police officer crying out loud. So what she does is she leaves. Okay, she leaves at the station um, with the intent. Well, the obviously, you know, her colleagues at the police station think, you know, she's going to get a, a photo. She comes back at a later stage. Now, when she comes back at a later stage, guys, she's crying. She's crying. And she's hysterical. Now, everyone wants to know, you know, at the station, how Rosemary, why are you crying? You know, what, what is going on? And Rosemary says, no, but I've lost my husband. I've lost, my husband has been killed. Now, the thing with that statement is when Rosemary made the statement that her husband had been killed, they had not yet identified the body that they found as Maurice Mabasa. Now, the question would be, how did Rosemary at that time know that that was Maurice Mabaza? The body had not been identified and um, the body had not been confirmed to be Maurice Mabasa. The body is later identified to be that of Maurice Mabasa. Um, the family is informed and, you know, it goes through the process of, you know, forensic analysis and a post-mortem is then released. I tell you, the level of brutality did not only speak to how angry the person might have been who had caused his injuries that led to his death, but also it was almost as if that person wanted to be sure that Morris was dead. Rosemary later filed a claim because she had, you know, insurance on Morris Mabasa. And she knew that Morris had, you know, a policy. Now, the documents were with the insurance company. And these documents are now being um, scrutinized. When the agent from the insurance company scrutinizes the um you know the the claims form she realizes that rosemary's um document says that she is mabasa in other words that her surname is mabasa right yet there is no evidence of a marriage that is registered with home affairs that will give you the, the legal right to call yourself by a married surname. Another discrepancy that they found, and I want you to look at this because this is, this is crazy. The signatures are not the same. The signatures um, are fictitious. Fictitious meaning that they are not similar to Maurice Mabasa's signature, meaning that, you know, he did not apply for the insurance. The insurance agent that, you know, signed up Morris is then questioned. And he says, no, but I remember signing up a dark-skinned guy. You know, he says he went to Rosemary and Morris um, because when you sign a person up to a life cover, they need to agree, they need to sign to it to consent that um, they are giving the right to be insured. And the agent says, the person I met was a dark-skinned man. But Morris is light-skinned, guys. This led to an investigation, um, and it was found that Rosemary was actually contributing to so many policies, like insurance policies. Uh, you know the same way you'll bulk buy for groceries end of the month a 24 or 15 sunlight. She was bulk buying insurances. She was bulk buying policies. You look at the insurance advice for all the policies. Mutual group, mutual group scheme as upon life. Mutual group scheme. Mutual group scheme as upon life. As upon life. Workers life. Mutual group scheme. Uh, Pop Crow, there's been in the insurance as well in the SAPS. Discover Life, uh, Old Mutual. 
Rosemary ultimately received a payout um, for Morris's death, and this payout now amounted to 416,357 Rand and 84 cents. That was the amount of money that Rosemary um, was paid out for Morris's death. This was not the first time that Rosemary tried to kill her boyfriend, Morris. The landlord, with her renting out the time when Morris and Rosemary were staying together, now comes out and testifies um, in this episode and says, um, Morris called me at some stage where he was sleeping and he, you know, he woke up to fire in the house. Smoke everywhere. So he runs out naked. He only realized that he's naked when he's outside the house. The house was on fire, guys. Rosemary was nowhere to be found. Instead, she had packed hours earlier a bag where she had collected all her important documents, like more ID, book birth certificate for the child. You know, the, the documents that you hide under the bed, less is important. Rosemary had packed that up, changing clothes, baby's clothes, almost like she knew that if I don't leave this house, this house is going to burn down. And funny enough, they find bottles of petrol, about three or four liters under the bed that Morris was sleeping on. Rosemary wanted that guy gone. That's where they then found patterns to certain deaths and payouts. Um, then it was Rosemary's aunt, from the aunt to the niece, from the niece uh, to the sister, to the sister, to this family member, that family member. And it just became a whole spider web of people that Rosemary had as a hitless and she was just scratching out names guys this was the worst horror movie that i could ever watch 